Originally, this episode was going to be the beginning of the box cutting and assembly video, but this call between Kyle and I ended up taking 30 minutes. So we've packaged it up as its own little episode and guide slash tutorial for you. Hope you enjoy. Stick around if you want to learn how to make boxes. This is the episode for you. All right, guys, so I sat down at my computer and realized that I have pretty much no idea what I'm talking about. And Kyle is like an expert at this. So I brought Kyle in so that hopefully he could walk me through this a little bit. What's up, man? Hey, hey, just hanging out. So this is your website, dude. This is like your bay. Well, it's not my website, but it is my bay. Yeah, I love boxes.py. I mean, we can build a box from scratch to, yeah, to kind of fit our needs, right? But that's what I need. Yeah, they kind of did a lot of the hard part for us so we don't have to worry about joints or figuring out measurements and building from scratch we can just kind of put in our dimensions and go do they have a pre-built for like a bin because that's what i need i need like a bin they do so if you want like a bin that you can kind of stack they have those they got boxes like individual boxes with like an open top mm -hmm. they got like these like tray kind of deals note holders I have a feeling though, you're kind of looking for more something like maybe this, like an yeah, organizer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So, I mean, they have a lot of stuff, obviously. Uh, they have like storage shelves and all that, but let's dive into bin trays here. So, oh my God, that looks like math. It is math, but we don't have to really worry about it, right? Let, let's take the complexity out of this. So the example they give down here is a two by two set of blocks, right? Mm -hmm. The equivalent to that would be if we did this. This by two or multiple of two is just a, a quantity of from left to right and top to bottom. Okay. So it's like an array. Right. It's it's exactly like that. It's an array. Think of it as just you're figuring out the area of a box by giving it the number of segments you want. Mm -hmm. So we have two segments of 50 from left to right and two segments of 50 from top to bottom. Is it, it says 50 back to front, each but or 50 between the two? The width of the box, essentially. Right. But we have like two slots. You know what I mean? So it, like is, it is the width of each of them. I should say each individually. Okay. Yep. Got it. So the, the total here essentially would be like about a hundred give or take. Once you add in the, the factoring of like the width of the material or uh, thickness of the material and all that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the kind of the, the next thing we want to look at. So you also have height here. Uh, so that's the inner height. But one of the factors that we want to consider is if we want to use outside or inside measurements. So using an outside measurement is like I have X amount of material and I want to get the most out of it I can kind of thing. Right. I find it's easier to keep this checked because then it's easier to kind of scale up whatever you're trying to build mm -hmm. to maximize the material you're using. Whereas if we want to fit something into the box and have it form fitted, right. then we would uncheck this. And now we're giving it the specific dimensions of the actual inside of the frame of the box. So if I was like making a box to hold like Pokemon cards, I, I would want exactly. that to be really specific. Exactly. Okay. So if you don't want whatever you're putting in there to wiggle around, if you're creating packaging for a product, whatever, removing this check mark for outside and making sure that you're using inside dimensions, that's going to be really helpful. Okay. The hole here, so mounting hole diameter, shaft and head, it's not really pictured well here, but if you've ever used like slide locks on like the back of like a surge protector, Just like something like that mounts it onto a screw and then slide it down and it kind of locks in. Exactly. So it's got a bigger hole so you can fit the head of like a screw through it and then it slides down and it locks onto the back of the head on the shaft. Mm -hmm. So this first measurement, 3.5, before the, the shaft, essentially, of the screw, you're basically going to want to give yourself a little free play there. And then 6.5 is the, the head. So it knows how big the hole is to, to fit over the head before you slide down onto the shaft, essentially. If I plan on having this freestanding, can we just omit that entirely? Uh, we can remove that after the model is generated, essentially. So we cool. can just go into Lightburn, ungroup it, delete it, and it's gone. Cool. That's not a big deal. That's just a cut that we can remove. And then fraction of the bin height covered with slope. So that is uh, essentially this slope segment here in the front. Mm -hmm. So at least for now, I'm going to say let's leave that as default just okay. so we're not adding another variable in. This is another one. Obviously, if you're generating your own bin, like in the future for a specific project, you need all of these first three, right? Mm -hmm. You may or may not need the whole but you're going to need the thickness. So if you don't put the thickness in of your material, you can kind of see how these are 
sunken in just a little bit from the edge if you're looking at the example box. So that's kind of par for the course if you're not really precise. And you could end up with a quote unquote quarter inch sheet material at the hardware store or whatever. Instead of quarter inch, you may end up with something above or below that value. Oftentimes it'll be just a little bit thinner. So quarter inch would be something like maybe six and a half millimeters or something like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time when you buy a quarter inch, you end up with something like five, maybe five and a quarter, which is pretty common. It can vary, obviously, from material to material. And as it dries out, it may shrink a little bit or whatever. But that's where these sunken in bits kind of go. And that can, depending on the complexity of the box you're making, if you're using one of the other options on the site, if you're not precise enough, it can lead to assembly problems. Right. Um, the teeth won't fit in the notches. Or right. Or fit too well. It'll be like loose. Exactly. 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 And as you, if we were to expand this, so if we go to like four by four bin mm -hmm. sizing on this or five or more, where we're inner interlocking multiple pieces together and then trying to fit the outside around that, it can kind of tweak things a little bit and make it a little more difficult to be accurate. So we want to be accurate on thickness. Got it. So a micrometer or like a precise measuring device is very helpful when you're doing stuff like this. Yeah, I actually measured the thickness. I measured 5.25 millimeters. So that would go in that box. Exactly. So I threw that in there. And now we have format. So this is pretty loose. We can we can do a lot with this. By default, it's set to SVG, but they've also implemented Lightburn 2 formatting. So you can import it as just a direct project file. You don't have to do that. It doesn't really matter. Lightburn, if you're using Lightburn anyway, we'll take SVG, DXF, PDF. It'll take a lot of this stuff. I prefer to just leave it as SVG personally. More or less the rest of this, you're probably not gonna use too much. It gives you the option for adding tabs, which isn't really necessary here. Label Labels, which is very helpful depending on the complexity of the project you're trying to put together. Mm -hmm. Labels is like back, top, front, whatever. <laughs> the more pieces there are, the more complexity there is. Now we, we, you helped me out in advance with this. I measured my two pieces of leftover wood that I had. Yes. And you knew what the dimensions were going to be to fit into that box. Is there an easy way to figure that out? Or is it just kind of guess and check? and generate um, files and, and see if it'll fit once the files are generated. Because of the way it generates the items, it's a little bit of guess and check, but I'll go into that kind of speed hack in a minute of how okay. I do that. The last thing I want to cover on the site is the reference thing here. So this is kind of important if you ever import a project or an SVG or DXF or whatever. It gives you a reference block that's 100 millimeters long. That way you know the rest of the project is in scale. So if you Ooh. highlight everything and you determine that this reference block is like 110 millimeters, you know you're 10% oversized and you need to resize it to get it back into spec. The last thing, inner corners here. So this is the corners where the cutouts kind of meet up mm -hmm. like on the tabs here for like the finger fitment, loop, corner and back arc. It just tells the software on the back end of the site how to generate those cuts. I haven't had any problems with using loop, so I just leave it there. But okay. your mileage may vary on that. And then burn, this is like a curve curve offset yeah which i prefer to just leave it like this and if i need to adjust it i do my curve offset in lightburn got it i i've left it at point one and haven't had a problem yet so that said i think we're ready to move into lightburn if you have unless you have any questions no so we just hit generate yep we would just hit generate here before we do let's dive into lightburn so we're going to talk about kind of how i went about this to help you maximize that scale right in this kind of tool path i have here uh, this is literally just a T1 tool path. We determine that you have about 23 and a half by 31 and a half inches of flat board and you have two of them, right? Yeah. So I generated two of those boxes. So I just used the square tool on tool path, made a box that size. And what I did was I generated the project here by hitting download. And I went into my downloads folder and dragged it in and we got these individual pieces and I kind of roughly form fit them into place. Mm -hmm. And I dragged, if we were Remove this. I took all of these and I literally scaled them until they were taking up as much space within this as we could with a little bit of margin of error. So we obviously wanted to make sure that we weren't taking up every possible inch to make it an absolute nightmare to get the sheet aligned in the laser, right? But we have a buffer of about a half an inch. 
on both the width and the height. So you actually the took the file you downloaded and it adjusted the scale on it to make it fit. I adjusted the scale to make it fit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now this isn't a usable file. This is but, just right. to get kind of the rough idea of how big we can go. Because the teeth and the notches aren't going to match the thickness exactly. of the material anymore. Yep. So we could actually use the, the tab resizer within Lightburn to kind of work around that. But rather than go through the hassle of individually clicking all these things to adjust, we can kind of get a lot closer a lot faster by using this measurement tool. So in Lightburn, if you miss that, it's along the left side. It's a little ruler icon just below the A for the text tool. We have this little measurement box that's going to pop out. I'm just going to go to one of the orientations, essentially. So here's the top, for example. And we can actually measure out the entire width from front to back and get a value. So this is in inches. I'm going to switch this to millimeters. So it's in relation to the actual tool that we were using to begin with. And we want to go from the outside of the tab all the way to the front. And I have snap to object turned on. So that's why I'm able to kind of do this zoomed out. And we have 221 from front to back. We also, from this side to this side, 332. So what I can do, this is segmented out into three. It's a three by three grid we generated and we used the defaults there. I would take those values and divide them by three. And the reason why is because we need to account for the fact that it's dividing that into three on the website. So if we go back here. So this would be more difficult if we were using the inside measurements. Right, just a little bit. And the reason why is because we're using a project that is essentially measuring from out outside to outside. Right. So like in the example photo here, it's accounting for the outside dimensions of the wood as well. So if we, were doing, if, if we were doing an inside measurement project and we were trying to do this trick, it would have to be the the thickness of the material times two removed from that total. Uh, essentially, yeah. So it's going to be a factor of however many walls you're adding. Oh, so or, we have a three by so three like segment. example case that we're looking at on the screen, that would be three thicknesses removed. Yes. Yeah. yeah because you have two outside walls plus the center divider to make two. Got it. That's exactly it. So there's a little bit of math involved in figuring that out if you need the inside dimensions. And you can kind of play with it and get it close and then fine tune after you get it close, right? You don't have to go too crazy because it's just a matter of downloading a copy of what you have generated here, seeing where you're at, and then just adjusting as needed. Going back to Lightburn here, that's kind of how I determined where I need to measure and how much I need to measure. And you can also use the back plane too which will give you your full width and your full height, not just front to back. But this will give you the width and the height of the, the boxes. This will give you the depth. When it comes to wording on the project, you need to be conscious of that. So this is left to right and this is front to back, but this is in laying down orientation, not in this orientation where it's upright. Right. So just keep that in mind. If you get it wrong and you, you realize that when you generate it, it's okay. Just switch the measurements around on this and regenerate it. It takes five seconds. In doing that process of this and kind of form fitting it to get it to work, we came to this. So we kind of determined we could go four by four for your project. Since you were kind of just needing something to fit odds and ends in, extra cables, power adapters, stuff like that, right? Yeah. If you needed something bigger, we can take the measurement tool and determine kind of a rough idea of how big these are going to be. These are about 93 and a half millimeters wide and 93 and a half tall, so they're squares. We could reduce the number of compartments to like three by three, right. and we could increase the capacity of each compartment and still fit the same size, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. This is a file that we can generate right now, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our bin here, and I'm going to adjust these to kind of fit the sizes we need. Mm -hmm. So I determined that we need about 100 millimeters and then multiply that by four compartments. And we're gonna do the same with this value here. So left to right, back to front, which is actually our height. And this is our depth. We're just gonna leave it at 100. Again, we're not gonna be worried about the whole diameter unless you plan on hanging this on the wall. I don't. All right, so we can actually skip this and then I can show you how to remove that from the project file. So we can just skip over that. And we already have our thickness in of 5.25 millimeters. We're going to grab an SVG. We're going to leave the labels and the reference on. And we're just going to hit download here. And then I'll open a new project in Lightburn. We'll drag it in and we'll see what we got. Sweet. So we have our fresh Lightburn file here. I'm going to go ahead and drag in our project file. Whoa. Yeah. This is on 
just a, a no machine cabin light burn. So don't be scared of the size. But a couple things we need to be considerate of is I have this set to fill and it needs to be a cut line. And blue is also a cut line. Um, but this is our, our kind of sanity check, right? So we want to make sure this is 100 millimeters. And it is. So we know that uh, this is to scale. So what we can do from here... Not be to scale? Depending on the file type that you import it as, it can be problematic. So if you import like a DXF, I've heard some people have some troubles. Or if you just grab the whole thing and you accidentally scroll down on width, you could now it's, it. yeah, yeah, you're you're kind of messing with it at that point. It's just the sanity check, essentially. So if you have all of these grouped and you make an adjustment to kind of make everything fit, and then you double check this and you find that it's off, then you know you have a problem. Right. First thing you're going to want to do as well with all of this in mind, I like to grab everything and ungroup it. And I like to grab the labels and go up to edit and select all current shapes and current cut layer. And that's going to grab all of my red labels here. And we're going to move them to a tool path so we don't accidentally mark them, but we want to be able to see them. Nice. You could also just turn off output on that, but it doesn't particularly matter too much. And I'm going to grab everything because these are all cuts and we want to put them on one layer as cuts. Gotcha. Uh, and last thing we're going to do is these are our wall hanging cutouts that we talked about mm -hmm. that you don't need. We're just going to yeet those and they're not a problem anymore. And that's it. Easy. Yeah. So what? Now we draw a box the size of our material and start placing things into those boxes. Pretty much. We can get rid of our little checksum here. We don't need this anymore. We know it's to scale. And I'm going to generate a fresh tool path. If I switch this to inches, we know that you have roughly 23 and a half by 31, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 31 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just shaving off the half inch just to make sure you're not right up against the edge. Right. On the keypad, if you use the actual period or delete key, it's a shortcut for 90 degree rotation. If you oh, didn't nice. know. I didn't. So pro tip there, and I'm going to duplicate this using control D. Basically, these are our workspaces that we need to fill. I'm going to grab these. Now, be cognizant that if you followed my steps, at least, these are going to be ungrouped. So I need to regroup them before I move them or I run the risk of messing them up. So I grabbed by highlighting from bottom right to top left around something. That gives me basically the whole item. And then I'm just kind of dragging it into place. And then I'm just going to kind of do that the same way I did before. It can be a little tedious, but not too bad. So I'm just going to kind of grab these and I'm going to group this so it doesn't screw up. And I'm going to rotate this and kind of shove that down a little bit to save a little space. An auto nesting feature would be great in Lightburn to kind of yes. nest it all these parts together. Yes, there's a lot of ways we can kind of shove things together, but there's not like this level of automation, right? We can rotate things, but we can't reflect them. Is that right? Yeah, you you really don't want to mirror them yeah. when you're doing this. So while it won't make a huge difference in the sense that you're punching it out and you can just kind of assemble it backwards, it can create some fitment problems in some ways, depending on the project you're doing. Plus, just like, um, I mean, even just charring, because you, you'll have a backside and a front side. Obviously, that front side is going to look nicer. Right. So just for consistency's sake, I, I don't. It makes it much easier to process if there's any post processing needed. Mm -hmm. Anything like that. Yeah. Yep. Cue, <laughs> cue the time lapse. Are you sure you put the right values in? Because I feel like on the original one on the right, you put like 90 something in. I think I figured out what I fucked up. I unchecked outside. Oh, no. Uh, well, we're going to start a new time lapse now. This is why it's important to be convenient or uh, consistent. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. I'll just rebuild that scene really quick. Okay, super simple now. Hey, and I didn't refuck it up again, so that's nice. Yay. All right, there we go. Wow. Yeah. 
So we're all uh, we're all form fitted in here. So we have a qualified example of how we need to lay this out on the cutting work table, essentially on your CO2 laser Sweet. to get this all to fit. Uh, just to recap, we removed the little mounting screw holes for the wall because this isn't going to be sitting on the wall. And we selected everything on the label layer by going to edit and select all shapes on current layer with everything ungrouped. We move that to a tool path. Uh, you could also just turn off the output for that so you're not burning that into the, the wood that you're working with. And we changed all of the tabs on the inside cutouts to the same cut layer. You could leave them that way, uh, especially if you're working with just generic software, you might want to have them separate so they're cutting out that way. But with Lightburn, with uh, optimized cut path, you can actually select to have everything. Like an inside out. Yeah, yeah. That's not really a problem here. This is a, on a no machine setup, so that's not going to really reflect here. But yeah, so we're all set. So I can send this over to you and you can send this over to the laser after you set up your layer parameters and you're good to go. And then it's just cutting and gluing. Everyone loves gluing. Oh boy. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, thanks for your help, man. I appreciate it. I definitely would have taken a lot longer to do this on my own, but I think I understand a lot better now. Awesome. Let's see how the, the final project comes out. Ugh, okay. Good luck to me. Here we go. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the uh, different take on a Laser Everything episode. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content was good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when we finally cut and assemble this box. If you really love the channel and the content that we're creating over here, consider supporting us at the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support the channel. There's a bunch of extra learning tools there, like bonus episodes of the podcast and bonus episodes of our live stream content. Plus you get all of the augmented course content. So any of our online courses we offer for free, you also get written and audio lessons along with self-paced assessments. It's really great. For more information, check it out over at masters.lasereverything.net. If that sounds like more than you need, but you still want to support us, you can find out all the ways you can support Laser Everything over at lasereverything.net slash support. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this tutorial helped you out, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next one.